Okay, this is a video response to SXE Phil's video about the LHC, uh, Will the World End Wednesday. And I'm kind of new to YouTube, the whole blogging thing, but I really want to get started into it, and this video kind of jump-started me into the blogging scene because this is a topic that I'm really interested about, and for a few, well, pretty much my whole school career, I've wanted to be a theoretical physicist, so I've studied up on a lot of this stuff. And especially this week, coincidentally, I've been uh, looking up the LHC and a lot of particle physics stuff ever since school's been going on. So I'm going to answer a few uh, SXE Phil's questions. Why are we doing this? Is physics right or wrong? Uh, what do you think about the LHC? Will it destroy the planet? Is this good for technology? Or do you think anything will happen at all? And I have some notes on my computer, so... I'll probably be looking away from the camera more than often just to brush up on uh, what I'm going to talk about so I don't just go rambling on. Hopefully I'll try and fit this all in under 10 minutes, but I know it's a lot to talk about, so let's get this done. If you don't know what the LHC is, it stands for the Large Hadron Collider. A hadron is a particle in the bound state of quarks, and the most popular hadron is a baryon made up of three quarks and the most popular baryons are protons and neutrons etc. Uh, the Large Hadron Collider is in Geneva, Switzerland on the Switzerland-France border and it's approximately 17 miles in circumference and is the largest machine of science today and to get a feel for how large this machine is you could fit Manhattan inside of the circular particle accelerator the cost of this huge machine is about uh, 10 billion euros and I think the last time I checked the euro was 1.5 times that of the US dollar so about 15 billion US dollars just for this machine that really just uh, smashes light together but I do think it's a great uh, scientific advance and, and I think it's amazing that we are doing it so the first thing I want to talk about is the possibility of creating black holes and what I have to say about this is that many black holes, if created in the LHC, they wouldn't have enough energy to even light up a light bulb. These uh, black holes are subatomic, they're smaller than a proton. And uh, you kind of have to measure these in the Planck length, and that's a length physicists use to uh, put in perspective different subatomic particles. The Planck length is 10 to the negative 33 centimeters long. So it's extremely small, and when black holes are uh, fit into this small amount of size, they no longer rely on general relativity but quantum mechanics to govern how they work. And it was Einstein that first suggested that there is no minimum mass for a black hole, which uh, is in the book the, Ele the Elegant Universe by Brian Greene. It's a really good book to read, especially if you're interested in physics or not. It's a really good book. Uh, it's found pretty much at every bookstore. So, uh, the size of the gravitons that are emitted by black holes, the particle that governs gravity, uh, often get lost in the 11 dimensions of space-time when you get that, that small in space. So when you're dealing with black holes that are, that are extremely small, they only emit so much uh, gravitons into the space, which often are always lost. So the pull of these... Uh, black holes is not really felt at all, and uh, another thing XXE Phil talked about was Hawking radiation, and Hawking radiation it really states the smaller the black hole, the faster it evaporates. So uh, black holes that are really on the subatomic scale will evaporate almost instantly, and when they do evaporate, they release a sudden burst of particles when it explodes. So you get a lot of particles coming out, and they're gone almost instantly. The LHC was originally thought to be too weak to create many black holes, but when you take into account uh, extra spatial dimensions at that size, uh, physicists had to make extensions to the standard model of physics, and it is now to predict predicted to create many black holes at approximately one per second. So every second in the LHC, one more 
little mini black holes created and pretty much instantly destroyed. So another thing is that we get bombarded with mini black holes uh, extremely often. We get bombarded with a lot more particles that are a lot more energetic than mini black holes every day. A good example of this, although not as energetic, are uh, solar neutrinos. And if you don't know what a neutrino is, uh, it's an extremely small subatomic particle. Um, very, very smaller than an electron. And 50 trillion solar neutrinos pass through a human body every second. So just now, one second, 50 trillion solar neutrinos just pass through your body unfelt. Uh, they're so small they just pass through atoms unnoticed. So, uh, the standard model of physics assumed that neutrinos were massless, but current research in Japan in underground tanks showed that they do in fact have mass extremely small, though. And solar neutrinos are often studied in astronomy. Uh, uh, solar neutrinos especially due to beta decay in the sun with uh, neutrons decaying into protons and losing neutrinos. Okay, so a hope for physicists to get out of the LHC is they want to know how the Big Bang played out milliseconds bef when it happened. So uh, what physicists really want to know is they want to help account for the missing antimatter in the universe. Uh, right now, only about 30% of the known antimatter in the universe has been accounted for, and physicists are wondering really is, uh, where is the under other 70%? And the LHC is going to accomplish this by recreating a situation similar to the Big Bang at the moment of creation, where matter and antimatter are created in equal parts in a vacuum. So, the amount of matter and antimatter in the universe should be equal, but from what we observe today, it isn't. So, physicists would like to know what could have happened at the moment of creation that made the antimatter disappear. So... How we detect this in the LHC is there's a special kind of uh, camera and two detectors called CMS and ATLAS. And the special type of cameras take uh, photographs of the reactions when the two uh, beams collide at 600 million frames per second. So an extremely fast camera uh, is able to detect really what happens in the LHC. Another thing that we hope to get from the LHC would be to confirm or deny the existence of the Higgs boson, which is the only standard model, model particle yet to be observed. Uh, the observation of the Higgs boson would be able to explain why other otherwise massless elementary particles manage to construct mass in matter. Uh, specifically, they want to know why massless photons and relatively massless W and Z bosons uh, why they are there. And W and Z bosons uh, mediating the weak force in quantum theory. So the existence of the Higgs boson would be able to tell us if physics currently right now, the standard model of physics, is correct. So the Higgs boson is really huge in physics, determining whether physics is correct or physics is incorrect. So uh, Physicists should be able to know right after uh, LHC is turned on, right after that first experiment, if the Higgs boson exists or not. And if it doesn't, we'll have to create a new standard model of physics to account for why things have mass. And that's really what the Higgs boson tells us, is why things have mass. So we want to see if that uh, exists or not. And if the Higgs boson does exist, it'll definitely take us uh, one step further to the GUT, uh, the Grand Unification Theory, which is, uh, I believe, the major underlying principle of physics. We want to know uh, the Grand Unification Theory, which will unify everything into one theory. Uh, another outcome of the LHC is called Sparticles which are super particles that express the next generation of vibrations beyond superstrings. And I'm not going to get into superstrings or superstring theory because it ex it's a, an extremely complicated subject that uh, a famous quote by 